Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things up your good friend, and today is a pleasant Sunday smoke. And on this pleasant Sunday smoke, I am smoking a little bit of GLP's Fillmore in my Castello Shape 55 Pot Sea Rock Briar, one of my favorite pipes. Uh, an amazing pipe, a lovely pipe. I love Castello pipes. I wish I had more of them, but they're expensive. I'm smoking the Fillmore because we are continuing the Replacing Elizabethan series on the channel, wherein I attempt to find a replacement for my beloved Elizabethan, a vapor. Uh, we've done Stratford by GLPs. We have done Telegraph Hill by GLPs. I had narrowed it down to Stratford, Telegraph Hill, and Fillmore. Now we're doing Fillmore. This, the final verdict, I'm not gonna do a separate video on Fillmore and then a separate video saying, hey, here's my final verdict. This is my replacement for Elizabethan. I'm going to kind of meld those together. So we'll do the Fillmore one and then my conclusion within that video, but that won't be posting this coming week. That will be posting the week after because this Wednesday, I have a different video for you. Um, you may remember, I have to hide this. You can't see this yet. This is clickbait, clickbait. You may remember that uh, a couple weeks ago, three weeks ago, can't remember exactly, Someone wrote in, I believe his name was Scott, to Sunday Smoke and asked me if I had ever heard of Briarworks pipes. And I said I had, but I had never actually seen one, never actually really looked into them very much in depth. And he said I should check them out. So I had looked at their website and they seemed like reasonably priced um, sort of factory pipes, but with a little bit of hand finishing and things like that. And so, kind of jokingly when I was in, during the Sunday smoke I mentioned hey if you're out there Briarworks send me a pipe I'll take a look at it and I guess Scott let them know and then Pete from Briarworks contacted me and said hey we'd love to send you a pipe so they did um, we have one in here and I just recorded a video in which I unbox the thing take a look at the thing and smoke the thing for the very first time so I'm not gonna show you now. I'm going to make you wait until Wednesday and you can check that video out. That will be posting at the normal Wednesday time. Uh, there is tobacco in this pipe right now, so I'm going to take it out <laughs> and put it away. Uh, I'll finish that later. Check that out Wednesday. The Red Dead Redemption 2 series is ongoing on the Stuff and Things Plays channel. My God, gang, that is a good game. That is an amazing game. I love that game. I was tempted to do sort of a special video on the game. In addition to the gameplay that I've been doing, because when the game initially came out, it was getting all these perfect tens and, you know, really good scores. But then there's been this sort of, I don't know, games media hipster backlash against it. Um, where people talk about how it's boring or it's tedious or it's slow. And I find that so obnoxious because to me it is a perfect game. Well, not perfect. There are flaws. There are complaints I could have about the game. If you've seen my gameplay, you'll know, especially in the early episodes, which are the ones still playing or still showing right now, um, I find some of the controls frustrating. I do eventually learn how to play the game. There's just so much going on and so many different mechanics. Um, I've recorded over 30 episodes and I think it's episode like 11 or 12 that's on the channel at right now. So I'm way further now today than I am in the videos that you're seeing. So a lot of people are leaving comments like, oh, you do it this way or don't do that. Or, and I appreciate that, but I'm, I've already pretty much got a handle on it. But to me, it's just indicative of the kind of state of our culture right now where everything has to be immediate, everything has to be instant gratification, and everyone seems to have super, super short attention spans. And a game like Red Dead Redemption 2, to me, is like a really, really amazing novel set in a very fully realized world, and you can completely immerse yourself in it. And it's not constant action. There may not be anything going on, really, at any given moment, but I just love being in that world and I love exploring it. And it makes me sort of role play more than any other game I've ever played. Like the other night, I wasn't recording for an episode. I just wanted to enjoy the game myself. And I was on my beautiful horse 
uh, which you guys haven't seen yet. I think that episode will premiere soon when I get my amazing horse. And we were traveling in the hills and I was just kind of moseying along and I decided to go hunting. I found some, uh, some elk and I hunted and killed an elk and then I skinned the elk and then I set up camp and then I cooked some elk and then I ate some elk and then I brewed some coffee and then I drank the coffee and then I brushed my horse and fed my horse and then I went to sleep and then I woke up and then I practiced my, my quick draw and dueling skills for a while. Then I decided I, I needed to go into camp. I was kind of dirty. Actually, I'd, I'd been treasure hunting too. I found some treasure following maps, following clues. Then I went into town and I got myself a room in a hotel and I got myself a special deluxe bath uh, with a very beautiful bath attendant. Then I went down to the saloon and I got my beard and hair trimmed. Then I had a nice lamb dinner at the saloon and then a man in a weird raccoon cap picked a fight with me and I beat him up and then I took his hat. It's stuff like that. Like that's the game. And there's also an amazing, really cool story that you can engage in as well. But for me, the thing that is most enjoyable about the game is just being in that world and living that life for a while. And I've heard complaints where people are saying, Oh, if I wanted to do mundane things, I would just do those in my daily life. Like I have to cook dinner, I have to bathe myself. But my daily life does not involve riding around in the American West in 1899. In the game, that's what you're doing. I'm not doing that now. And that's why it's so cool because it's such a, an amazingly realized portrait of that time period. And obviously it's a video game and it's heightened and there are a lot of things that they've taken liberty with. But in terms of a video game, it is the most vivid, most perfectly realized snapshot of an era, of a time, and of a way of life that I have ever experienced. And I find it just amazing. It's an amazing game. So continue to check that out. A lot of new viewers have come because of that, because it's such a popular hot game right now. People have found the Stuff and Things Plays channel. Um, which is another reason why I wanted to shell out for the PS4 Pro and for Red Dead and play it on the channel because I figured, you know, it's, it's in the zeitgeist right now. It's what people are talking about in terms of video games. So I'm glad I did for that reason and especially just because I'm enjoying it so much. I'm sorry to go on and on about Red Dead, but I love that freaking game. Um, another thing that you will not like me going on and on about, the Seahawks. They won. They beat, uh, well, they're five and five now, so I can't get too excited. But they beat the Packers, and it was one of the best Thursday night games I've seen in a long time. Usually Thursday night games are blowouts, and they usually suck. But the Packers and the Seahawks, they always seem to play each other really tough. And uh, it was another enjoyable game. I liked it a lot. Uh, Wilson was missing a lot of throws early on. But then in the fourth quarter, he really came alive and they, they looked pretty good. And Aaron Rodgers looked amazing in the first half and then in the second half, he was missing a lot of throws. So I don't know what was going on there. But uh, I don't know. I'm still kind of iffy about their chances. I still think it's possible they could get one of those wild card spots. Um, we play Carolina next and I think that's in Carolina. And even though Carolina got just blown out by the Steelers, was that last Thursday night? I can't remember. Um, I still don't think that they're a pushover. So that's yeah, that's not the easiest game in the world. But then we've, we're going to have the Cardinals. We're going to have uh, the 49ers. And then I think the Chiefs might be the last game of the season. So we'll have some easy ones and then some hard ones. But I think I think it's possible that, that they could end up over, four, over 500 and maybe get one of those wild card spots. So I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. So what else is going on? Well, for my American viewers, it is Thanksgiving coming up this week. I know for the Canadians, it was last month, right? Something like that. They have their own Thanksgiving. Um, ours is coming up this Thursday. It must be hard for people living in California in the path of those fires. Um, it just, the holidays are supposed to be nice and supposed to be fun. And I can only imagine what those people are going through um, having to evacuate their homes, many people losing their homes, some people losing their lives. So that sucks. Um, probably enough said about that for now. But Thanksgiving, I was thinking about Thanksgiving 
and thinking about some people think or say that Thanksgiving in the US is even bigger than Christmas. And I don't necessarily agree with that, but I will say that the Thanksgiving dinner is probably a bigger deal than the Christmas dinner. It seems like people pull out all the stops a little bit more for the Thanksgiving dinner. And I had heard a podcast recently and it was people from the UK talking about uh, Christmas dinner, because obviously they don't have Thanksgiving there. And they were talking about their favorite side dish during Christmas dinner. And this is interesting to me, and I'd like some of you in the UK to chime in in the comments. So apparently my impression was that in the UK, it's usually a roast for Christmas, like roast beef, because I didn't think turkey was as prevalent in the UK because turkey is from here, it's from the new world. And I knew it, it's over there. I know people can get turkeys there, but I didn't think it was traditionally as big on Christmas dinner. And then they mentioned one of their favorite sides were pigs in a blanket. And I was like, what, really? Pigs in a blanket with Christmas dinner? And, but then I discovered through just hearing them talk that their pigs in the blanket or your pigs in the blanket if you're in the UK are not like our pigs in a blanket. Because in the US, pigs in a blanket are they're like cocktail weenies or little sausages wrapped in sort of a, a croissant, croissant, why do I say it like that? A croissant like dough. Um, so it's like wrapped in pastry kind of, but not fully enveloped. It's just like wrapped, like a little crescent roll sort of thing. Um, but in the UK, it's bacon wrapped or the sausage is wrapped in bacon, but it's not bacon like we have in the US, because in the US we have nice fatty belly bacon that we cook up nice and crispy and it's amazing. But in the UK, it's more like what we would call Canadian bacon. So like back bacon, I guess. So anyway, this was this whole like, oh, this weird cultural thing. So if you're in the UK, first of all, let me know, is Turkey more popular for Christmas dinner than roast beef? Because I thought it was the other way around. And then number two, is it true that pigs in a blanket, the bacon wrapped version, are a popular side dish for Christmas dinner? Because I was trying to think of me on Thanksgiving, which is usually when we have turkey, and on Christmas we often have turkey, but we also would sometimes have ham. Thanksgiving is always turkey. If it's not turkey, it's not Thanksgiving. Christmas can be turkey, can be ham, can sometimes be roast beef as well. Um, but for a Thanksgiving dinner, having a big plate of turkey with turkey gravy and mashed potatoes and stuffing and uh, cranberry sauce and several different kinds of casseroles, maybe scallop potatoes or potatoes au gratin, and then like weird jello molds and things and olives and pickles and what else? There's so much more. Rolls, just all this crazy food. I can't imagine introducing pigs in a blanket, even our version of pigs in the blanket, but then the UK version, bacon wrapped sausages, like how, how do you even do that? That's just like a crazy meat overload. Um, I'm intrigued. I would like to try these bacon wrapped pigs and blankets. Uh, I guess Canadian wrapped, Canadian bacon wrapped pigs and blankets. And now I want just the like crescent roll American style pigs and blankets too. And sometimes you can get them where they have cheese melted inside there as well. It's delicious. Uh, yeah, it's just kind of weird. Is that the case, UK people? Let me know what's going on. And in Canada, do you are, do you have more like American style Thanksgiving for your Thanksgiving or for your Christmas? Do you do like American style or do you do the UK thing? Do you have the pigs in the blanket wrapped in bacon as well? And do you call Canadian bacon Canadian bacon or do you just call it bacon? And what do you call the kind of bacon that we have in the US? The belly bacon that's all fatty and crispy and delicious. Melts in your mouth. I don't know. These are questions I have that I would like answered. And I'd appreciate it if you'd answer them for me. All right, gang, it's time for hashtag ask stuff and things. Remember, if you have a question for me and you would like it answered on the Sunday Smoke, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag ask stuff and things, all one word, and I will try to answer it on the next Sunday Smoke. This first one is from Tyler at, okay at Tyler 9442187. But he's requested a voice because he's tired of me using a robot voice when I read his questions because of all the numbers at the end of his username. He asked me to do a depressed voice. So I guess I will do my best. He says, <clears throat> Have you ever gotten any 
negative reactions from pipe smoking in public. Hashtag ass stuff and things. Um, no, I never have, Tyler. Uh, I have had just the opposite. I've had people sort of charmed and or delighted or maybe at the worst slightly bemused by seeing me smoke a pipe. It doesn't seem to hold the same kind of uh, just negative connotation that cigarettes do. In the US, cigarettes are considered the greatest evil that has ever befallen mankind and people will have no trouble just to your face telling you that you are dirty and disgusting for smoking. It's kind of weird. Um, but pipes, people are just kind of like, oh, look, he's smoking a pipe. And they find it interesting. They find it, I guess it's sort of uh, this old fashioned retro kind of thing that people don't expect to see. And so, no, I've never had any uh, negative reactions from people. The next question is from Edge at Brian Edge 555. He says, Greetings again from North Carolina. I recently took a tin of Solani Virginia Flake with Perique and rubbed it all out, dried it a bit, and jarred it. Have you tried this? I prefer a ribbon cut over flake like yourself, so this helped me enjoy the blend as an all-day vapor. Um, I have never rubbed, pre-rubbed out a flake and then jarred it up. Um, I see nothing wrong with that idea. I think that would be kind of convenient uh, to just get it all ready, put it in a jar. But for me... I guess I'm trying to have my cake and eat it too, because with a flake, it, I, this probably won't make any difference because the amount of time that I'm going to have that tin is not going to make, it's not going to age a lot while I have the tin. I'll probably smoke the tin and be done with it. So what I'm trying to say is the fact that they're all still in flakes, that's what sort of helps the flavors meld together. And so if I rub it all out, you're kind of defeating that purpose. But if I'm going to just smoke the whole thing anyway um, and not put it away for a couple years, then I don't see any issue with sort of pre-rubbing it and then smoking it that way. Not a bad idea. Okay, next, 52 dislikes at 52 dislikes. He says, <clears throat> hey Bradley, with the holidays upon us, have you any recommendations of tobacco blends for the season? Bremen Piper did a good video on the blends popular in Germany. However, they are mostly aromatics. Do you have any wintertime favorites? Um, I don't know that I necessarily have a particular blend that would be my favorite in the wintertime, but I do, as I've mentioned in the past, tend to sort of gravitate towards heavier blends, a lot of Kia blends, English blends. Nightcap was an old winter favorite of mine, sadly no longer available, but things like Artisan's Blends, Artisan's Blend, or maybe even uh, some Kentucky Blends or Dark Fired Blends seem to just go well with cold weather, um, crisp, wintry weather. So more like that. I don't, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I used to do um, the McClellan Christmas cheer every year, but McClellan doesn't exist anymore either. So yeah, I can't really think of anything specific off the top of my head. Um, this next question is from Big Fitzwell at lucky 13 Me. He says, <clears throat> I know we have asked about your old song. Uh, uh, <clears throat> let's try that again. I know we have asked about your old demo song a million times, but what do we have to do to get you to let us hear all of it? Extra exclamation points and question marks. Also, thank you for introducing me to the amazing Hollow Knight. Um, you will never hear the rest of that song, ever. And I'm being spiteful because people keep asking me, and I will never let you hear it. You'll never get to hear it, ever. Never. Um, and Hollow Knight's great. I'm glad you appreciate it. Um, Uh-oh, we got another one from <coughs> Flemhead. <coughs> At Flemhead, he says, <coughs> just switch, man, his questions are always so long and it always kills me to do this voice. Just switch from <coughs> cigars to pipe smoking about <coughs> three months ago. I've got a bunch of humidors going to waste and <coughs> didn't want to invest a lot of money in room and in, in ball jars. Was he saying bale jars, bell jars, ball jars? To store pipe tobacco. <clears throat> I don't really know <clears throat> what I like yet anyway, so I'm buying a few tins every now and then. <coughs> Opening them, <clears throat> trying them, and storing the closed tins in a humidif hum hum humidified humidor. I have five large humidors. <clears throat> I don't think I'll ever be the type of person that smokes one thing over and over anyway. 
with the plethora of, of brands and blends on the market. I really enjoy the variety. <clears throat> I've had absolutely no problem so far with tobacco drying out or becoming molded over. Molded over. Is this a legitimate means of storage? Um, Flimhead. I do not recommend keeping pipe tobacco in a humidor. You say that you've had no issues with that thus far. And a lot of, or pretty much all pipe tobacco, pipe tobacco, tobaccos will have anti-molding agents um, added to them, but they're not cigars and they do not benefit from being in a constantly humidified environment. I would recommend over that just getting airtight jars. I know you said you don't want to invest in those, but getting canning jars and throwing blends in that or just leaving the tins unopened until you do feel like you're going to smoke them. I know you say you want to try a bunch of different blends, so if that's the case, um, it's very cheap to get a, a flat of like four ounce or eight ounce Kerr canning jars. Um, they have them at Walmart, they have them at most normal grocery stores. Um, just buy a flat of those and cram your tobaccos in there, seal them up airtight and you'll be fine. Everything I've heard, and I don't have any personal experience with this myself, but everything I've heard says that you should not keep pipe tobacco in a humidifier. If anyone has any personal experience with this, chime in in the comments below and let Flemhead know uh, if that's a good idea or not. I think it is not a good idea. So there you go, gang. Those are all the questions. Uh, stay tuned. I, I took the pipe out, but this is the sock for the Briarworks pipe. I will be showing this to you on Wednesday. Please check out the Red Dead Redemption 2 series, currently ongoing on the Stuff and Things Plays. I love that game. Um, I may talk about it again in the future. I'm sorry, I can't help it because I love it so much. I also got a game, uh, Tetris Effect, on PS4, which is really, really good. I love Tetris. I hadn't played a new kind of Tetris um, where they sort of changed the rules a little bit. I had, I'm only familiar with the old classic Tetris for the most part. Um, but they did some things that I was kind of unsure of, but the game is amazing. It's great. Maybe I'll do a video on that too at some point on the channel. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, there's a lot coming up, a lot going on. Stay tuned, subscribe, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button, hit a bunch of other buttons. Any button that you see, hit it. It might help. I don't know. I have really no idea how this works. But anyway, until next time, until we meet again, I've been a good friend, Bradley. You've been the audience. has been Stuff and Things on a pleasant Sunday smoke. See you later.